I'd like to take just a few minutes to look at a very common topic, something that we all deal with, excuses. I found a quote online that said, if it's important to you, you will find a way. If it's not important to you, you'll find an excuse. Also, excuses are well-planned lies. Now, from the very beginning, there's been excuses. We read even in the Garden of Eden. If you would, go ahead and turn, beginning in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. I've got several scriptures I'd like to look at, so I'll try and make this a, try and cover a lot in just a little bit of time, like we just did a minute ago. But Genesis chapter 3, beginning in verse 10. Now, to give a little bit of context here, God had created the world. He put man in the world, and then he later brought woman in the world. And in the very beginning of chapter 3, Satan came as the form of a serpent and tempted Eve. And Eve tempted Adam, and they both ate of the fruit. So in verse 10, it's, uh, this is Adam talking here. He says, I heard your voice, talking to God, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid, and I was naked, and I hid myself. And then God asked, why, are you, why were you afraid? How did you know you were naked? And then the man said, the woman gave to me, the woman that you gave to me, he's kind of putting the blame on God here. The woman that you gave to be with me, she gave me the tree and I ate. It's her fault. It's not my fault. It, I'm not really to blame here. It's the woman's fault. So God looks at the woman and she said, okay, it's not my fault either. It's the serpent's fault. The serpent tempted me. But they weren't excused. If you turn over just a few verses... He says to the woman, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. Just a few verses down, it says, Cursed is the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Talking to the man there. And then Exodus chapter, th ch uh, chapter 4, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter 4. Like I said, there are so many examples of excuses throughout the Bible. And this is another one, another great Bible leader, another great Bible character that we read about, and that's Moses. Exodus chapter 4, verse 10, Moses makes excuses. I'm not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Basically, he was saying, I'm not good enough. I can't go lead these people. I can't go talk to Pharaoh. I can't take these people out of bondage and lead them to the promised land. I'm just not good enough, God. But the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. The Lord had faith in Moses. He knew that he could do it. Moses just didn't believe in himself, so he was making excuses. Next example is also in Exodus. Exodus chapter 32. Another great Israelite leader right there in the very beginning, and that's Aaron. If you remember Exodus chapter 32, Moses had just gone up on Mount Sinai. He had gotten the Ten Commandments. He came back down, and he found the golden calf. And he approached Aaron. He was furious, furious about it. He smashed the tablets into the ground. But Aaron again made an excuse. Oh, it's not my fault. It's, don't blame me. You know the people, that their eyes are set on evil. It's not my fault. Blame the people. Don't hold me accountable for this. For they said to me, make us gods that shall go before us. So it's not really my fault here, Moses. But that had some tragic consequences. Verse 33 of that chapter, And the Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. Now therefore go, lead the people to the place of which I have spoken to you. And then in verse 35, So the Lord plagued the people because of what they did with the calf that Aaron made. So even there we read of excuses, and they had tragic results here. Another one is Judges chapter 6, verses 14 through 16. Judges chapter 6. This is talking about Gideon here. We know that Gideon went on to become a great leader, but in the very beginning, he had doubts about himself. He had doubts that God was going to truly be with him, so he made excuses. Judges chapter 6, beginning in verse 15, it says, So he said to him, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. I'm a small person. I don't have a lot of say. I'm not a strong person. I don't have a lot of force of personality. What am I going to do? There's no way I can do this. But the Lord gave him a boost of confidence here. It says, And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. So the Lord was saying, If I'm with you, you could beat all these men by yourself. Don't have these doubts. Don't make these excuses. You can do this because I'm with you. Now if you would turn to Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, we read of another person here making excuses. So countless times throughout the Bible, it's sad to see that so many men 
make excuses throughout the Bible. Jeremiah chapter 1, beginning in verse 6. This is Jeremiah talking here. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord again gave him some encouragement here. In Jeremiah 1 verse 7 it says, But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you. So we knew that God was with Jeremiah. He went on to prophesy. He was considered one of the major prophets because we have a lot of his writing. So we see that God was with him. Another example is in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Now this is more of a hypothetical situation here. This is Jesus talking. He's giving a lot of lessons here. And this is the passage that we know as the I never knew you passage, which says in Matthew 7, verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, they're going to make excuses. They're going to tell me why they should be let in. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. These people were trying to make excuses. Lord, we do, we've done all these great things because of you. We should be able to get to heaven. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Jesus wants obedience. He doesn't want excuses. He wants us to obey him. And we can have that confidence to know that he's on our side. Just a couple more examples here. It'll be in Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. You would go ahead and turn over there, verses 24 through 30. It's talking about Jesus has just given the parable of the talents here, and he's talking, and now the master is talking to the man with one talent. Matthew chapter 25, verse number 25, it says, And I was afraid. He was making excuses too. He feared his master. He didn't want to face the consequences, so he made excuses. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. This man, these excuses weren't availing for this man at all. He said he was afraid, but the Lord said, no, that's not going to cut it. You can't make excuses. You've got to do the work. And then in verse 30 it says, and he cast out the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. So he was punished for making excuses. Another example is over here in Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14 we see this is the parable of the wedding feast where there's a master with much. He invited all these people to come to a feast. But they, he sent his servants out, but they made excuses for it. And it says, But then they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, him I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. Now how many people here are going to go buy some land? They've never seen it before, but they're going to go ahead and buy it. They're just going to take the price. They've never seen it before. They don't know what's on it. They don't know what they're going to use it for. But they're just going to buy it. That's not going to happen. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to test them. Now, who's going to go buy ten oxen and not know what they're capable of? They could be diseased. They could be weak. They've not been tested, and he's going to go test them now after he's bought them. So that doesn't make any sense either. And then another one, a much more infamous excuse. It says, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So this man also was making excuses here. I'm, I'm married now. I can't do this because I've got other things. I'm making excuses here. But that made the master of the house angry. And he said, just go out and tell all the other people. Those, okay, those people aren't going to accept my invitation. Go tell these people to come in. I'm going to open the door to them. And none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Now just one or two more examples here. Acts chapter 24. Acts chapter 24, verse 25. We know that Paul was just being, he was on trial here, and he was in front of Felix, and Felix was afraid. That was his excuse. He was afraid. And then he said, when I have a convenient time, when it's better time for me, I've got things that I'm taking care of right now, but when I've got a better time, I'll send for you. And then the last one is in Acts chapter 27, just a couple of pages over. Paul's talking to King Agrippa, and we hear some of the saddest words in the Bible. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. Paul, I've heard you talk. I've heard you preach these great things about Jesus. But I've kind of weighed that against what I have right now. I have great riches. I have fame. I have power. And you know what? I'm not going to do it. So I'm putting the praise of men. I'm putting the things here on earth 
above Christ, above what Christ wants me to do. Now, what's our excuse? What excuse do we have to not be teaching, to not be preaching, to not doing what God wants us to do? If there are any excuses, there shouldn't be any excuses. We shouldn't be making excuses, making reasons why we shouldn't be doing the Lord's work because that's what we're commanded to do. Now, maybe we're making excuses for not being baptized. And that's something that's commanded us to do throughout the Bible, so please come forward and do that. Maybe we're making excuses for not being restored. Maybe we're saying, okay, I don't want to do that because. Don't make those excuses. Let's do what God wants us to do. Make sure that when it's the judgment day, if Christ were to come tonight, that we won't be standing before the judgment seat saying, Lord, I have a reason why I didn't do what you wanted me to do. So if you need to make that right, please come. Together we stand and sing.